Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you, God bless you. Sister Ann, good to see you this morning. Sister Flowers, good to see you. Good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for coming in and tuning in this morning. Amen. Another blessed day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. God has been gracious and God has been good. And no doubt we have no more than honor. All honor goes to him. Sister Paula, God bless you. Good to see you again this morning. Sister Brown again. Bullock, good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. 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 Do I see my aunt putting in Selma's watching today? God bless you. God bless you. You'll be able to see this um, episode on on YouTube once I upload it, once this um, once we are done um, this morning. So anytime that you want you miss it, you can go again on YouTube and watch it. Amen. What the Lord had to say on this morning. Amen. Make sure that you show yourself friendly. Make sure that you show yourself friendly on this morning. Make sure that you greet everybody in the room. Amen. Let's make sure that this atmosphere is conducive for the move of God, that God may be able to speak. Amen. That God may be able to speak. Don't forget. Don't forget to text somebody. Don't forget to tell somebody. Don't forget to uh, 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 hit that share button. Amen. Hit that share button that our fr family and friends will be able to uh, hear what you hear and be blessed the same way you are. Amen. Amen. So make sure that you text somebody. Make sure that you tell somebody. Make sure that you hit that share button and that you may be able, that everybody may be able to be blessed on this morning. Amen. Sister Jennifer, good morning. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. First of all, I do. I want to thank all of you to, again for allowing me to, to come into your place and your space on this morning. Amen. I am, I am honored to be able to share the word of God uh, with you. Amen. On this morning, I am blessed. Hopefully, everybody is doing well. Amen. Aunt Viola, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. But Dennis, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Brother Dennis, make sure you hit me up sometime today, man. I got something for you, man. Make sure you hit me up sometime today. Amen. God bless you. Sister Davenport, God bless you. Thank you so much for being a blessing, for coming. Make sure you text somebody. Make sure you tell somebody. Make sure that you share. Amen. Uh, this, this live, this Facebook live. Amen. Amen. We're going to give time for people to come in. Thank you again for tuning in to Enoch Ministries. We walk with God, and we hopefully you'll walk with us all the way from earth to glory. Amen. Amen. How many of you are ready for a word this morning? Amen. Mother, mother, she's up here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Minnie. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Listen, do me a favor if you mind, if you don't mind, turn um turn with me to um the book of John, the gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. Turn with me to the Gospel according to St. John. Amen. Sister Jennifer, 6 o'clock in the morning on the West Coast. Thank you so much. You are sacrificing on this morning. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your place and your space. Amen. Sister Jessica, good to see you all. Amen. Amen. That's my cousin right there, David. How you doing, man? God bless you, David. God bless you, man. Thank you again for coming on. 
and sharing with us this morning. This morning, make sure y'all y'all text somebody, tell somebody. Make sure you hit that share button. Go ahead on and hit it right now. Amen. It ain't gonna hurt you. Go ahead on hit some hit it. Amen. And share with your family and friends and groups. Amen. That they may be able to uh, later receive. Uh, What the Lord has to say. Okay, Amen, Amen. If you don't mind, we're gonna let, ask every head be bowed just for a moment in a moment of prayer. God, our Father, we thank you and praise you now for these moments. We thank you again for life and life more abundantly. And God, right now, we just say thank you, and we're so grateful and honored to be alive on this morning. And since you woke us up this morning and started us on our way, we, we want to give you every bit of us. Amen. Thank you, God, now that our minds are stayed on you because you kept us in perfect peace. Thank you, God, when robbers was was robbing and thieves was stealing and murderers was killing, you protected us. No hurt, harm, nor danger came to us, nor to those who are attached to us. We thank you, God, that you spared us one more time. So, God, right now, we pray now, God, that this day be purposeful. And this not only be purposeful, God, but we pray now that you will use us in this day. Bless now the presenter of this word. Allow me to speak the oracles of God, line upon line and precept upon precept, that understanding and truth will come to the hearers. Now bless those ears who are about to hear what thus says the Lord. Bless them, God, that they may be able to be not only attentive, but be able to hear what God has to say and be a doer of God's word, that we may come together and make this world a better world, and it all starts because of us. We love you, and we bless your holy name. Now bless this gathering. In Jesus' matchless and marvelous and majestic name that we do pray, and the people of God say amen. 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 Do me a favor, if you don't mind, turn with me to uh, uh, the, the gospel according to St. John. The gospel according to St. John, starting at chapter 1. Starting at chapter 1, we're going to start and pick up at verse 43. We're going to pick up at verse 43. Amen. Verse 43. Let me see it. Let me put my eyes on this morning. Make sure, make sure you get your word. Amen. Uh, uh, we're going to camp out at verse 48, but we want you to make sure that you get the totality of this, this passage. So we want to make sure that you understand what we are saying. Okay. Uh, Gospel according to St. John chapter 1, starting at verse 43, reading out the NIV. You'll find these words. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethesda. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, Nazareth, can any good thing come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Her is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Let me read that one more time, verse 47. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me, Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. 
Amen. Thus ends the reading of God's word. And may these truths sink deep down into the bosom and corridors of one's soul and find them a resting place. I want to talk about for these preaching moments. I want to talk about for these preaching moments. You didn't see me, but I saw you. You didn't see me, but I saw you. You hear Uncle Buttermilk? You hear? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's go ahead on. Let's go ahead on and get, get started on this morning. I'm talking about you didn't see me, but I saw you. Amen. That's, that's, that's John chapter 1 and verse 48 uh, is where we're camping out at. Amen. We read entirely 43, um, verse 43 through uh, 50. Amen. Uh, from this, at the beginning of this prophetic presentation, Sister Allison, I just want to ask this question. Have you ever been uh, uh, somewhere or in a distant place only to bump into somebody from where you stay? Your home. You, you somewhere way in another state and bump into somebody that you know. Those of us who have, uh, that have been blessed enough to travel know this experience. These are the times, my brothers and sisters, when you are a hundred miles away from home, but stumble into a familiar face, whether it's in a supermarket, whether it's in a shopping mall, or whether it is some public activity. Some learned that our neighbors saw us much earlier from across a room or from a distance in a crowd and had been watching us bef long before they ever said anything to us. And my brothers and sisters, I need us to understand something here. Uh, uh, it, it feels funny when you're being watched from afar off. I, 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 my brothers and sisters, some learned that our neighbors saw us much earlier. But the truth of the matter is there are few places that we can go in the world and not be seen by somebody we know. The little children come and play hide and go seek in the house or in the yard. Where can anybody hide in your house that cannot be found? There are just so many places, there are but so many places that you can hide. They are usually always found, even those who hide themselves in closets or in cupboards or under the bed or even in dirty clothes hampers. Either way, you're going to be found. We all, my brothers and sisters, I have discovered, have hiding places. You know, that place where you go where you want to be by yourself. That place, that place where you go where you don't need to hear no outside voices. Where That place where you want to be just isolated, where there's nobody but you. We call it me time. My brothers and sisters, there was a lady by the name of Corey T. Boom. She wrote a, a book called A Secret Sanctuary from the Nazis. In her book, it was called The Hiding Place. Alibaba and the 40 thieves of the Arabian Nights hid themselves inside of a mountain whose door only opened when you say, open sesame. The prophet Elijah, remember him? He tried to hide from King Ahab. Where did he try to hide? Under a juniper tree. We go to our hiding places because we don't want to be seen. Am I right about it? It's an eerie feeling to be watched in secret. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Sister, Sister, Sister Viola. It, 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 it feels eerie to knowing now that you've been watched. Amen. It was in 2002, a woman, a woman by the name of Susan Wilson was the victim of her neighbor who, who have installed video cameras all over her house, unbeknowing to her including in her bedroom and bathroom and recorded everything. 
when discovered, my brothers and sisters, prosecutors had, was frustrated because there were no laws. There were laws for unlawful entry. There were laws for peeping toms, but there were no laws about installing cameras in your neighbor's house. Wilson went then on a campaign to let to make laws get changed because there were no laws about installing cameras in people's homes. So now, my brothers and sisters, there are nine states that was the result of her petition. Now there are laws about video, uh, video in your neighbor's homes. There are laws. So my brothers and sisters, I can imagine it was an eerie feeling knowing that you being watched. Very few people relish being watched in secret. So that's why, my brothers and sisters, we install curtains, we install blinds, we install uh, a dark tent in the windows of our cars, we protect our email passwords, and, and we even sometimes register at the hotel under another name because we don't want to be discovered. My brothers and sisters, I come by to let somebody know that I suppose that you, that despite of your best efforts at remaining anonymous, that God of ours, I want you to know, know who you are. Not only does he know who you are, Sister Monique, but he know where you are. He know how you got where we are, and he knows why you are there. Can I get a witness right here? Listen to me. It might be a surprise to some, but God knows all of our identities. He knows all of our identities and he knows my hiding places. He says he even knows, Brother Eugene, my thoughts. Yes, he does. It is written in Psalms 139 verses 2 and 3 says it this way. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest, watch this, my thoughts from afar off. He, he knows my thoughts even before I gather them. Thou compasses my path and my lying down and are acquainted. Watch this. This is what got me right here, Brother Gatlin. He's acquainted with all of my ways. Mm. There is nothing there is nothing about me, there is nothing concerning me that God isn't aware of. Can I get a witness right here? That he is ne he's not aware of, my brothers and sisters. He says that I know you from afar off. Mm. He's acquainted with all of my ways. There is nothing about you, there is nothing about me that God is unfamiliar with. Can I get a witness here? In, in, in Hebrews, he said it this way, that I, I, I became whatever you are to be able to save you. My brothers and sisters, so as believers, I'm aware that God knows all about us. He, he keeps his eyes eyes on us. Watch this. Not to spy on you like man does, but God watches over you to protect you. He watches over you to provide for you and to give us direction. In other words, he's our GPS. Can I get a witness? It should give us a sense of security knowing that he sees us even though we can't see him. Ain't you glad that God watches over you? Ain't you glad that God, that God sees you? Because the truth of the matter is I feel more secure knowing that I have a God in front of me. I got grace 
peace and mercy behind me, beside me, and I have Jesus behind me. I have a team that cannot lose. My brothers and sisters, I come back to let you know that I feel secure in an unsecure world because I have a God that watches over us even when we don't see him. Brother Jonah, come with me just for a few minutes as I peruse around the parameter of this particular passage of pericopes. When my brothers and sisters, I looked at this text, this text was telling me to teach us something. So come here a little closer as you allow me to give my expertise on this exposition. This text focuses on Jesus as he assembles his disciples all together in the beginning of his ministry. And he called upon Nathaniel to follow him. Jesus now has entered into the region of Galilee and requested Philip to become one of his disciples. The text says here that Philip found Nathanael that the promised savior, uh, let, me, let me go back. The text says that Philip found Nathanael and told him that the one prophesied by Moses have arrived. He has come. Philip now, who's already been chosen, told Nathaniel that the promised Savior was the son of Joseph from a small town called Nazareth. Philip here doubted that Jesus could be the Messiah because he was born in a community called Nazareth. Y'all help me here. He asked the question, that prevalent question this morning, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip's only answer was, come and see. Come and see. When, when, when people put their mouths on you and really what they're saying is, can any good thing come from that community? Can any good thing come from that set of parents? Can any good thing come from that atmosphere? Can any good thing come from that type of influence? Can any good thing come from Nazareth? Oh, my brothers and sisters, and I'm so glad to report that Philip gave a direct answer. Amen. He says, just come and see. Come and see and vouch for yourself. Now, don't, I'm not going to give you anything else. I'm not going to be opinionated about what I told you. Um, I don't even want you to take nobody's advice concerning somebody else. I don't even want you to give me an assessment of who you think they are or who you think he is or she is. Come See for yourself and give your own evaluation. And can I stop and put a pin right there? Because too many of us are taking the assessment of somebody uh, uh, based off of come out, what comes out of somebody else's mouth. And you never met the person, never had conversation with the person. Because let me share something with you. Because, because your engagement with somebody does not mean that I'm going to have the same same type of engagement with that person as you did. Matter of fact, what you got probably what is what you deserve. Can I get a witness here? So I'm so glad, my brothers and sisters, that Philip says, come and see. The Bible says that soon Jesus met Nathaniel for the first time. Listen to what I said. He met Nathaniel for the first time. Listen to what I said. Jesus met Nathaniel for the first time. Instantly, he discerned that Philip was a good man and addressed him as an Israelite in whom had no guile. Nathaniel wondered how Jesus could make such a statement when they had never met and neither knew anything about each other. 
Oh, my brothers and sisters, I stopped right there because that's what grabbed my attention right there, Jessica, because as Philip and Nathaniel was walking towards Jesus, Jesus looked at the rest of the disciples and looked at him coming and pointed to Nathaniel and says, here comes a true Israelite uh, uh, who has no guile or there is nothing false about him. Nathaniel walks up on Jesus and says, how in the world can you make that type of assessment on me when this is the first time we ever met? I don't know you, nor you know me. He says, a matter of fact, my boy right here, Philip, told me you was the Messiah, and I come to see for myself. Watch this here. I, I, I looked at that thing because if Jesus knows my thoughts from afar off, he already had peeped Nathaniel's whole card. Can I get a witness here? Watch this. Nathaniel asked, when thou knowest me, in other words, he asked, how have you met me before? How do you know me, man? Jesus could have answered that he knew Nathaniel. I knew you before you were born. He could have said that. He could have said that while he was yet a heartbeat in your mother's womb, he I already observed you. He, he could have said before your existence was even a thought floating in the, in the icons of time, I knew you. Such an answer would have been too confusing for Nathaniel. So Jesus answered him by saying in 1 John, I mean in John chapter 1, verse 48, Brother Roundtree, he says, Before that Philip called thee, that when, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw you. He, he said, he said, watch this, he said, even before I said anything to Philip, and when Philip confronted you about me, let me share something with you. I saw you under the fig tree, amen, and I know what you was thinking. <laughs> Philip, what, I, I want to know what uh, Nathaniel was, what, what his response was at that point. It says that was enough right there to convince Nathaniel that Jesus was the Lord because he knew that only a man of great discernment would know where he was and did not see him. A man of God or God himself could have known that he has been under the fig tree. Amen. Jesus told him that he believed that he revealed that he saw him under the fig tree. But he promised him that thou shalt see greater things than that. Do you, if you think that assessment of you was what was, was spectacular, you wait to what you see after this. Jesus told him that he believed only because I told you that you was under the fig tree. But you wait, you're going to see greater works than that. From that day forward, my brothers and sisters, Nathaniel became a believer. Truth allows us to get an insight into how God sees us as well. When I looked at this text, it shows me not only did Christ see Nathaniel under the fig tree, unaware that Nathan Nathaniel was unaware that Jesus was watching him, but Jesus saw him and discern what he was doing before, watch this, before Nathaniel ever came to meet him. Let me say it one more time. Let me say it one more time. Jesus saw Nathaniel under the fig tree before Nathaniel ever met him. To meet Jesus is for your life to change. Watch this. Anytime you come into contact with Jesus, your life changed. So Nathaniel's life had not changed until he met Jesus. Can I prove it to you? Because when Jesus responded and says, here come a true Israelite that has no guile. He believed, he, he believed 
that Jesus was the Messiah. See, his life changed. But before that, he was under the fig tree doing him. Are you with me? Doing him. So that lets me know that Jesus is aware of who we are and what we are and why we are where we are even before I meet him for myself. I'm not talking about meet him on the basis of what my mama said or meet him on the basis of what my father said or meet him on the basis of what the preacher said. I'm talking about go and meet him for myself. That's when my life will change. Jesus knows me. The Bible says that Philip brought him. He walked with Philip to Jesus. But can I tell you something? I don't know who it was that led you to Christ. I don't know who it was that was that was instrumental in leading you to the Lord. But can I say, they the ones that led you to Jesus. But Jesus is the one that changed your life. Can I get a witness here? So in saying that, in saying that, my brothers and sisters, I want to lift up three points very quickly. Very quickly, I want to lift up three points uh, of that Jesus watches us or he, he saw me when I didn't see him. I, number one, he sees, he sees us at worship. He sees us at worship. Can I share something with you right now for everybody that is that is watching and everybody that will be watching in the future? I want you to understand that Jesus is watching us right now while we're worshiping. While we're worshiping. Can, 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 I, can, I, can I prove it to you? Can I prove it to you? You know, it, it's a common, it was a common practice, Brother Roundtree, in the Eastern culture to have a place of worship and prayer. It was not unusual for many to pray under trees. The text does not tell us exactly what Nathaniel was doing under the fig tree. Listen to me. But if common practice is a guide, if, if, if culture is, is a form of history that teaches me to, 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 to do what to do with this text. It tells me this. This text does not tell me again exactly what Nathaniel was doing under the fig tree. But if Christ, but if common practice is a guide, he probably was praying. Watch this. In his quiet moment, where there's nobody but him in his hiding place. Listen to me, Barbara. In his hiding place. In his hiding place. He probably was praying. In a quiet moment. Whatever it was, Christ saw him. Whatever he was doing in his, in his place. Under the, under the juniper tree or in, under the fig tree, Jesus saw him. I just want to share this with you, that, that, that when no one else is looking, he is. When, when no, he, he sees us, he hears us, he sees our devout and contrite spirit, he hears our prayers. If we look around in this room on today and see who's on live with us, we can't see him, but he can definitely see us. For Nathaniel, my brothers and sisters, the port of contact was a fig tree. For you, it might be your dining room table in a quiet time of the day. It might be a special moment that you go into your own room, in your own place, in your own closet, and give God what is due him. You spend on the, you spend on the side of your bed and you begin every day by praying. Your fig tree, your fig tree could be one of many places where you talk to God and you can feel his 
presence in the cool of the day. Moses, Moses climbed to the top of the mountain. Abraham made a sacrifice at the altar. Jesus went into the garden. Where do you go to worship? We know about the garden. It might be the same God that the song wrote spoke of, spoke, the songwriter spoke of when he said it this way. I come to the garden alone with dew still on the roses and the voice I hear, mm, help me somebody, falling on my ear. The son of God discloses and he walks with me. And he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. And watch this. And the last stanza says, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Number one, he sees me, Brother Gatlin, at worship. He sees me at worship. That's what he does. Number two, number two. He sees my weaknesses. He sees my weaknesses. Make sure you put that up there if you don't mind. Point number two, he sees my weaknesses. Number one was he sees us at worship. Number two, he sees our weaknesses. I, 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 I feel I need to prove it to you. I feel like I need to prove it to you because some of us don't believe anything and I don't blame you much. Come here, let me give you something to stand on. God knows everything about us, including my strengths and my weaknesses. We as children of God and people of God, we, we have a tendency to parade, uh, uh, Sister Paula, our strengths. And we have a tendency to hide our weaknesses. Can I get a witness here? So not only does he seize me in worship, but number two, he sees my weaknesses. We parade our strengths, but we hide our weaknesses. Often we try to hide our weaknesses and, and sins from other people. But can I share something with you? God knows. God knows. Now, now that word know in the Greek, it actually means to be intimate is to be intimate. So when God knows, when I say God knows, that is a form of intimacy. Amen. Anytime you see intimacy, it actually means enter me and see. Intimacy. Enter me and see. So when I share with you that God knows us, He's saying that I have been intimate with you and I know I've entered you and see you for who you are and what you are. Amen, somebody. So the Bible says, the Bible says here, Adam and Eve face uh, discovered this truth in the Garden of Eden. Remember, they had broken God's law, eating of the forbidden fruit, and they hid their nakedness behind what? Uh-oh, here we go. What did they hide behind? The Bible says that they sold together some fig leaves huh, and tried to hide themselves behind the trees. However, my brothers and sisters, their fig tree were transparent. What you mean? What you mean, Boone? Fig, the fig tree or the fig leaves, even though they covered them, it could not hide them. <laughs> they hid their nakedness from each other, but not from God. <laughs> In other words, I have the ability to hide my, hide my sin from people. But I cannot hide it from God. There is nothing about us that God does not see. There is nothing about us that God is not aware of. There is nothing about us that God is not acquainted with. If we 
cheat, if we steal, if we lie, if we misrepresent ourselves or the kingdom of God, we may successfully fool others, but how many of you know God knows? David was able to receive the people or deceive the people of Israel about his sins with Bathsheba and his state-ordered assassination of her husband Uriah. But how many of you knew that God sent the preacher there and said, you're the man, you're the one. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 2, he says, For there is nothing covered, Sister Paula, that shall not be revealed. Never, neither he there shall not be known. The title, the title of Tyler Perry's stage play said it all. What's done in the dog will come to the light. It will come to the light because God knows our weaknesses. God, God knows our weaknesses. Can I get a witness here? And, and if he knows our weaknesses, I need you to understand something here. That, 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 that he not only knows our weaknesses, but he forgives us if we repent. He gives us another chance because he sees us in our weaknesses. How many of you just can stop right there just for a moment and just, just raise your hands right where you're at because you are a recipient of another chance? How many of you can stop and just raise your hands just for a moment right there just because, God, I just want to worship you right here at this point because not only I found out that you know my weaknesses, but I'm also a recipient of a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. Matter of fact, God, I tell you what, you've been forgiving me for 54 years. You've been, you've been forgiving me as long as I've been living. Can I get a witness right here? I know you're gracious. I know you're merciful because I am a recipient of another chance. Can I get a witness here? Number one. He sees us in worship. Number two, he sees my weaknesses. He sees my weaknesses. And number three, point number three, point number three, he sees my needs. He sees my needs. Kara, I need you to get this. I need, I, need, I need you to get this. This is why, this is why we're about to be blessed. This is this this is why, this is why that God is gonna open up doors for us that that was that wasn't even a door before. It's because God sees our needs. He promised that He's gonna take care of us, Sister Davenport. He says He's gonna do it. Now watch this. I need to prove it to you. God sees not only my needs, but he sees my daily needs. He scrupulously separates our needs. Watch this. God can separate my needs from my wants. It's a difference. It's a difference. God can separate my needs from my wants. And know exactly what we need to both survive and thrive. <clears throat> I need to stop right there just for a moment because I need for some of us to change our prayer life. We as the body of Christ, we the, as believers, we everybody that's on this live right now, get out of the mentality that I'm going to be, I'm just going to survive. But I need you to graduate to thrive. Can I get a witness right here? You deserve more. You need to do more. You desire more. So let's go get more. Can I get a witness here? It ain't because God desires for you to be poor and raggedy. No, he's not only going to allow you to survive, but he's there to allow you to thrive. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God has given life and life more. What? Abundantly. He give you more than what you even ask for. Can I get a witness here. That's what favor is. Favor is God giving us more than what we even expected. Somebody start praying for favor. Somebody start praying for favor because I'm expecting, I'm getting to the point where I expect more than what I'm 
shower with the Bible says that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. The Bible says that everybody is going to get the sunlight that we have today. Everybody's going to get the rain when it's falling. But that is some things that I expect God to give me that he does not give a non-believer. Can I get a witness here? He sees my needs. Psychologically, man, we, 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 we need food. We need clothing. We need shelter from the offset. That, I mean, that, that's from the Gideon. Beyond that, I need health care and I need emotional support. And now, 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 was there anything that I just mentioned that you can do without? Because if you are, 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 are a human and was created and breathed in by the nostrils of God, the spirit of God, you need these things that I mentioned, even emotional support. The scripture indicates to me that God sees the need of even the most ordinary people Remember, remember that widow woman who struggled to provide for her family so God meet her needs by giving her what she needed on a daily basis? Yes, Christ says the health care need of the man sitting by the pool for 38 years provided it for him. You remember that man that was been over for 38 years, could not get in the pool because somebody went in besides him. I'm telling you, God is a health care worker. Yes, he is. The, remember the apostle saw a lame man at the temple and answered his plea by saying, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. Remember, Mary and Martha grieve over the loss of their brother Lazarus, and we see Jesus responding to their need in a unique way by emotional support. I'm telling you, God knows what you need. The preordinances, the preordinances of scripture teaches me that God sees the immediate need of each believer. Whether our needs are financial, whether my needs is involving the payment of loans, meeting daily demands, or just making ends meet, God sees my needs. This should be a reason for hope. My brothers and sisters, for every believer, because we know that our individual situation is not unnoticed by the Savior. Therefore, the songwriter said it this way, why should I be discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? For Jesus is my portion. A constant friend is mine. His eyes is on the sparrow. And I know. <laughs> Somebody say, I know, I know. He watches me. Finally, my brothers and sisters, we got to consider this. There is much more waiting for those who trust God. We cannot see God, but he sees us. He doesn't see what we are. Or, or what we are today, but God sees my potential. Sometimes we can only see our weaknesses, but even when we can't see him, God sees our strengths. Can I get a witness here? So if that's the case, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we can only see our weaknesses, but when we have failed, all we can see is defeat. But even when our sadness clouds our vision, we cannot see him, but God sees my ultimate victory. When we fail, when Jesus spoke to Nathaniel that day, he revealed to him another mystery. Nathaniel was convinced because Christ saw him under the fig tree. But verse 51 said a greater truth was revealed both to Nathaniel and to every generation. John chapter 1, verse 51 says it this way, Miss Minnie. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter he shall see heaven open up, the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. 
It was a promise of greater revelations received from being in the presence of God. If Nathaniel was excited about the fig tree, his faith would be doubled when he experienced the fullness of the Lord Jesus when he says he shall see. My brothers and sisters, every saint ought to be excited this morning. You shall see because it is promised to take blessings, the present blessings, which we can see and expand upon the realm of it. He shall see. And I come by to let somebody know that even though you didn't see me, he saw you. Your fig tree, that place where he saw, your, saw you worship, that place he saw your weaknesses. Can I get a witness here? And that place he saw all of your needs. He saw that even before you met him. Somebody just say hallelujah right there. While Nathaniel was under the fig tree, God saw him worship. God, God, God saw him not only worship, but he saw his weaknesses and he saw his need and still received him when he came to him. How many of you glad today that Christ did not turn you around when you came to him? How many of you know today and just glad about it today that God did not give up on you even when you gave up on yourself? When you wanted to let go and turn around and go back to that hiding place. But God wants me to tell you that you can't even hide not in the, and not even in your hiding place. I'm not secretly watching you to expose you. But I'm watching you to protect you, to provide for you, and to give you guidance. Receive the work of the Lord in your life. Receive it. Receive it. I speak life over you right now. I speak God's eternal word over your life right now. That God will miraculously do something for you that will blow your mind today. I want God to open up doors for you. I want God to be your protection. Be your provision and never allow you to leave his presence. My brothers and my sisters, I love you. But God loves you better and God loves you more. Even when you don't see him, buttermilk, God sees you. He sees your hiding place, not in a negative way. But what I'm saying is, he knows when you worship him. He knows your weaknesses. And he knows your needs. And God is just waiting on you to come to him. For he can just tell you, I was expecting you. I need you in the kingdom. I need a brother like you. I need a sister like you. On God's side. That we may fight in war against the, against the enemy. That's right. He knows it all. He knows it all. And I'm done. I'm done. Don't forget to text somebody. Tell somebody. Don't forget to share with somebody this Facebook Live of Enoch Ministries. Thank you again for allowing me to come into your place and into your space. Thank you for worshiping with me. As I walk with God, I thank you over and over and over again. I'm so grateful that you love what you hear so much that you tune in every, every Sunday morning for Sunday morning manner. My brothers and sisters, in, in the, the description, you will find ways to give. If you are moved to give to this ministry, to sow into this ministry, there's a cash out of Enoch Ministries down in the below our below in the description 
Make sure you go there and sow a great seed according to what you have received in the Lord. I love you and I praise you and I just pray God's speed upon your life right now. I think, pray for me as God opens up doors for me also. I thank you so much. Love y'all from the bottom of my heart. Be great, be blessed, and stay blessed. Love you so much.